you are walking in the exact same power that God Almighty walked in when he said, let there be light. And words have creative power. Do you understand that? I declare a blessing. I speak it into existence without intimidation. When you speak something out, you give life to what you're saying. Death and life is in the power of whose tongue? Yours. And speaking into existence. You know, I believe in the law of attraction, and I believe that um, that you can speak I believe we're creators, existence. and I believe we create with every thought and every Everything word. You said law of attraction is about speaking things into existence. I'm big on like speaking stuff into existence. Um, and, I'm, and I'm a firm believer of speaking things into existence. Same here. Why is everybody attracted to the law of attraction, and is it in our church? Find out on this episode of LED Live. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to LED Live. Today we got an exciting show about the law of attraction. I've actually seen a lot of comments come in for us to explain this topic because we've talked about the New Age movement and things like that. But more so than just the law of attraction and the New Age movement, I'm interested in the law of attraction in the church. So I've grown up in a bunch of different churches and I've seen some pretty interesting things, but a lot of stuff you get to see it on TV because a lot of these mega churches, you know, they're on TV. And what's interesting is that's where the majority of Christianity is, right? These, these churches have stadiums full of people and because it looks attractive, you talk about the law of attraction, hey, you can speak anything into existence. Money, you want money? You just look in the mirror and say, I'm a millionaire, right? <laughs> and just keep repeating it. So we're gonna look at some slides here. So this is a website about the law of attraction. It's like one of the official websites called Success Consciousness. And it says the law, the law of attraction, meaning and definitions. So it says you can make it work for you with help of creative visualizations and affirmations. You can make it work by visualizing a mental image of what you want to achieve or by repeating positive affirmations. So that's highlighted. Like a mantra? Yeah, like a mantra. <laughs> So this is not from a church. This is from the world's standpoint. Sure. So we're going to look at both sides and compare. In this way, you create and manifest in your life what you visualize or repeat in your mind. Okay, so this is what you're doing. You're manifesting in your mind. You're repeating in your mind. There have always been people from ancient times till now who knew about this law and how to use it. They knew that repeating the same thought day after day with interest and feeling makes it materialize and manifest their dreams and goals. Okay, I have a, I have a real, just easy way to squash this right now. I wanna go to heaven. Yeah. I mean, I literally wanna go to heaven. I wanna go to heaven. Why hasn't anyone gone to heaven? Well, Jesus did. I, right, but I'm just saying like, why, if this was something that was real, why would, why would you even be like, I want a car, I want a house, I just wanna go to heaven. Yeah. Like, forget this place. Well, hey, I, just to be honest, there's Christians today that don't wanna give up things of this world for heaven, right? Like, this is true. <laughs> this is like, name it, claim it. Yeah, right? I wanna see my, my kids get married and all these things. It's like, isn't heaven worth more than that? So this is a, these are a couple YouTube channels. I, I'm just gonna show two, but look at this, this has, Five, over 500,000 subscribers. Like these people have half a million subscribers. This stuff is big. Like, so wait, this is not a Christian. Not this a Christian. Is just a, somebody that's yeah, because he's got Buddha. Yeah. He's got a genie lamp over there in the corner. Yeah, and that's okay. that's one thing too is people say this law of attraction is more scientific or something, not religious, but you always see religious stuff aspects in there. So, just check out what he says. You have the power to literally speak money into your life. This special meditation video is going to help you invoke the power, the vibration of money into your wallet. I now understand that I have the ability to speak and money comes to me easily. I simply say money come to me and it comes to me. In this video, the most powerful money spell chant to attract wealth fast. Say this one thing, take you two minutes, and watch how your bank account grows. The energies of the universe to bring wealth and abundance into your life. So what I'm inviting you to do 
is start saying this phrase over and over and over and over and over and watch what starts to happen in your life. So, are you ready for it? God's wealth flows to me in avalanches of abundance. God's wealth flows to me in avalanches of abundance. There is a power in this phrase in evoking the energy of God, the energy of the universe as well. Yeah, it is interesting. Like, you know, the, I, I'm assuming these guys are not like not Christian. Christian. No, no. Yeah. The universe. So I they, mean, I, I think that's interesting that he's still acknowledging that, that you know, God is the one that, that has all the power and <laughs> <laughs> it's like all his anyway. Yeah. I mean, have you ever looked at the secret? I have. And I remember when somebody first showed me that, uh, I was not in a Christian mindset and it sounded plausible. Yeah. I mean, it really did. Like, oh, wow, I want to be famous. I want to have money. I want to have this and that. Did you ever that. practice it? No, because I, I I don't know. Call me a skeptic, doubting Thomas. Weird. Okay, wait a minute. Were you ever involved in multi-level marketing? Ooh. No, I, I actually could never okay. stand those. Yeah. <laughs> because he totally used that all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You get into the Z Amway, all those mm -hmm. different kind of groups, yeah. and they totally, mm -hmm. you know, they tell you to go home and put the pictures on the mm -hmm. wall of the cars mm -hmm. and the, yeah, you know, the, the vision the board things. You know, they you know, make, you know, you have their meetings and, you know, mm -hmm. you're supposed to mm -hmm. kind of uh, put out that same kind of thing. So I think they're totally robbing, yeah. you know, law of attraction thinking. Interesting. I want a link in the description of uh, a couple web, a couple documentaries that I found by this guy. He exposes multi-level marketing and all that, and he's telling you how it's literally like a cult because it's just like a cult. That that multi-level marketing becomes your family. If anybody comes in and they're trying to tell you it doesn't work, get them out of your life because that's <laughs> negative energy, and you're never going to get anywhere with yeah. that energy in your life. So you got to get them out. We're your new family. That's a cult, and um, dude, it's just and it. And the thing is, is if it doesn't work for you, well, it's not our fault. You're just, you're not think, you're not staying positive yeah, enough. You have you, the right mindset. Yeah, you didn't reach out to five different people, so it's like <laughs> this. It never fails. You can never accuse the system because it's your fault. <laughs> Do you guys remember Mono V? Did you ever have that? No. It was acai, like uh, came in like a wine bottle, mm. but it was built around multi marketing or multi level marketing. And at the, the bottle was like twenty dollars. I mean, it was like <laughs> expensive, right? And people would like put Mono V on the back of their cars, and mm. you know, it was kind of like a Amway or something like that. And they'd be selling this. Well, it's funny because uh, when I went to Brown, down to Brazil one time, I mean, I had never really heard of acai or the berries or anything oh, like yeah. this when it first came out. It was just like, oh, this is from the Amazon, and they mm. had to climb mountains to right. get this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but then you go down to, to Brazil and it's like growing on all these trees wow. and it's just like, it's like falling on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wow, they have totally like surrounded a product around even a multi-level marketing and people bought into it big time. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you see that he's using God, the universe, you can it's speak it into love. existence, all about love. You know, it's very attractive. It's loving. It's positive. I mean, I, I got to be honest when I was looking into this stuff and and hearing some of the things, it really does seem attractive. I mean, it's like, who can who can say that positivity is bad, you know? So I'm, do you ever see any where people are trying to be healed that way? Yeah. Actually. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that they probably apply these same principles to, I yeah. mean, I would I guess. I do not have cancer. Right? I do not right. have cancer, yeah. Which, which is kind of interesting because... Um, I believe the mind is a powerful tool. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are lots of cases where people were just like, you know, whatever, sickness, get out of my body, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like their their body responds to that. It's it's so close. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the problem. It's yeah. so close because the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue, mm -hmm. right? The Bible says by your words you'll be justified and by your mm -hmm. words you'll be condemned, you right, know? Right, right. And, and it says that God spoke things into existence. It's right. Like, but that's God's prerogative. It's not right. necessarily ours. Ooh, and that's the you, difference. You bring up a really interesting point. I mean, it's just kind of these like yeah. murmurings of the, you are yeah. God. Yes. Yeah, you exactly. can speak yeah. this into existence. Yeah. Well, not necessarily because, uh, yes, I understand your point, but God actually, Jesus instructed us to do the same. So I understand how someone can can have that God attributes like in their mentality. Um, but for the Christian, it's actually okay because, I mean, look at uh, Mark chapter 11, verses 20, 23 
to 25 when he's like, you know, you say to the mountain, move and it will move. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, therefore, in this verse 24, I say unto you, what things I say, whatsoever things that ye desire when you pray, believe it and they shall come to pass. Mm -hmm. And in Romans chapter four, verse uh, 17 and 18 says, those things which are not will be as they were once you speak it mm -hmm. into existence. Um, but there's a deception because he's not saying ask for money. Right, there's exactly. hope, there's faith. Right, God right. says, it's not ask for selfish gain. if it's in my name and uh, you should be given. I mean, yeah. the scripture is clear. Yeah. Yeah, there's a whole there's a whole like framework going on behind that mm -hmm. because yeah, there's lots of things. I mean, you could take for example uh, healing, right? You're not necessarily ask even healing for somebody else. You're not yeah. necessarily for something selfish. You're asking that this person be be healed. Just because you ask it though, mm -hmm. isn't isn't saying, well, that's definitely going to happen. True, yeah. look at the because disciples. Because <laughs> we're operating in a framework where there's God and there's Satan. Mm -hmm. And they both play by a certain, you know, rules, if you will. And so there's things that God wants to do, mm -hmm. can't do because of the rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, this is so deceptive, so subtle, and that's why I can understand why people would be sucked into this which is why we need to talk about it, right? So one thing about these guys are saying, you gotta say it over and over, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. These videos are like an hour long. I mean, he, money, come to me and all this stuff. Yeah, that was kind of funny. <laughs> like, like it was like, it's gonna come to me. And he has yeah, this like low voice, you know. Yeah. It's like, and these people have half a million subscribers. But the Bible in Matthew 6, 7 says, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. The who? Mm -hmm. The heathen, that's the world that's out here putting this out there, right? Mm -hmm for they think that they will be heard by their many words. So we should not be following what they do. We should not do what the heathen does and repeat mantras over and over. And another one in 1 Timothy 6, 20 through 21 says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. Interesting because these people try to use science to justify what they're doing, which some professing have Erred concerning the faith, grace be with thee, amen. So here's a video clip of a couple of celebrities who are into this, including Oprah and you know rappers and musicians, and just hear what they have to say about the secret. We are a little obsessed. A little obsessed. With the secret. The secret, it's a law. It talks about a law of attraction. And one book that resonates with me all the time is this book right here. It's called The Secret. It is the most powerful book outside of the Bible that I have ever read in my life. Have you heard about it? This is The Secret. In the past few months, talk about this DVD has been spreading around the world. I want to hear other young niggas talking about their bosses and speaking into existence. You know, I believe in the law of attraction and I believe that um, that you can speak things into existence and I believe that um, once you, when you know where you're going and you know what you want uh, the universe has a way of stepping aside for you make a choice right you just decide what it's going to be who you're going to be how you're going to do it just decide and then from that point the universe is going to get out your way it's like it's water it wants to it wants to move and go totally, around yeah. stuff you know total believer yeah i believe in uh, manifestation i believe in uh, you know <clears throat> putting a rocket of desire out into the universe and and you get it when you believe it you get it when you believe you have it and that's the key just this i have an insane belief in my own ability to manifest things <laughs> insane belief you know that I think it's ultimately complete sanity, but I believe we're creators, and I believe we create with every thought and every word, is, every moment is pregnant with the next moment of your life. Make what you want happen, you know? Like, I mean, like you said, law of attraction is about speaking things into existence. You, you can really make what you want to have happen, happen. Uh, you know, exactly like you said, law of attraction. We, we got what we want out of life. So I'm big on, I'm big on like speaking stuff to existence, so I had to learn like, not to say stuff like, I, I really speak a lot of stuff I speak so much stuff to exist. You know, um, and, I, and I'm a firm believer of speaking things into existence. Same here, brother. I'm a firm believer of, 
you know, uh, you work and the universe gives back to you. I'm a firm believer in that stuff. You feel me? In the law of attraction, of course, and God as well. But I'm a firm believer in the law of attraction. And That's all God want to make us happy. It's the law of attraction I'm always talking about. If I want it, if I believe I can have it, then that's my reality. I'll attract it. It'll attract to me. We can make any situation we think about real. When you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you to get it. I think the universe actually conspired in helping me to be here today. All of us have within us this amazing capacity to manifest and attract anything that we want into our life. So we're vibrational beings. So as you were just saying, when we lift our vibration to what we want to experience, it happens first on a vibratory level, and then it shows up and manifests in our life. Thank you. This is such a surreal moment for me because, Oprah, you're on my vision board for am 2018. I? Really? And I am here, so I have manifested this moment. Congratulations. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I am a powerful manifester. Mm. And I know that, and I know, I know how to do it without physically putting it on a board. I Wow. All right, so two things really fast. Listening to all those people, uh, the, what you just said really came out in that, in the, the thought process. It worked. It happened because I did it. Yeah. I am therefore God. I'm the creator, all these things. Second thing is, isn't it interesting that many people, when things go wrong, they blame God. Oh. When things go right or they it's manifest me. something. They take credit. Or yeah. the universe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, like, that's such a twist. The universe bends to my will. And we know, like, just universe and the characteristics and the deception, well, that's Satan's MO. So it just goes back to the Gnostic beliefs and just what's trending today. That's so true. Like, you don't see people say, why is the universe so evil? Right. I'm not going to worship the universe. Exactly. It, it always makes things happen. Yeah. I'm, really good I'm point. actually. Actually, I, uh, it's hard to shock me some days, but I, I think I'm, I'm like still taken back by how many celebrities and people have this same sort of logic. And, and it's like, that's probably, if you were to sit down with a lot of different celebrities, that's probably what they think. I'm here because I just somehow made this thing happen and the waters parted and now I'm, I'm this wealthy, rich person, which is like, the most deceptive thing, because all the devil does is he uses the celebrity exactly. to show everybody, look at what's possible. That's exactly everybody right. follows the train, but yeah. nobody's getting it because, like Oprah said, I'm the one that manifested me to be here. What if yeah. you weren't? What if the doors were open because somebody knew you were spreading new age? Yeah, Jim Carrey said he, he was poor, wanted to be a comedian. He wrote a $10 million check, put it in his wallet. He said he dated it for like three years ahead. And he put it in his wallet and he said, over the years, it deteriorate, deteriorate, deteriorate. Exactly three years later, he got his role for Dumb and Dumber and got paid $10 million for it. So didn't you write yourself a check? I heard yeah. that you did. Is that true? I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered. And I gave myself uh, five years or three years, maybe. And, uh, and uh, I dated it Thanksgiving 1995. And I put it in my wallet, and I kept it there, and it deteriorated and deteriorated and stuff. And uh, and uh, but then, just before Thanksgiving, nineteen ninety-five, I found out that I was going to make ten million dollars on. I think it was Dumb and Dumber, maybe. Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Wow. So, like you're saying, they're building this whole thing, this whole philosophy, out of a ten percent. Who? What else product that we're like? Oh, ten percent of the time it works. I'm going to do it. You know, when they, when you go into the multi-level marketing, it's the one person at work for that they put on stage and they share the testimony every time. You got a whole yeah. auditorium full of people watching this same testimony. When it don't work, they leave. But then a new group of people come in, see the testimony. It works. Yeah. You know, they're only showing you the ones that work. They're the poster child. Yeah. I got four planes. Look at all the people like, like surrounding me. But it, it's so rare that that happens. Exactly. But yet people are putting so much faith into it. Oh, that's a good point. I wonder if, um, is it telemarketers? Mm, uh, the people, uh, preachers on TV. Oh, televangelists. Televangelists. Do they take a record? They probably don't, but I wondered if they took a record of how many people actually reached the level of them, mm -hmm. what's the numbers? Right. You know what I mean? Out of the hundreds of thousands. Some of the prosperity preachers exactly. and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. How many have their own planes? How many are debt-free, lavish? Oh, hardly any. It's amazing because they, they all pretty much have one thing in common when it comes to all this, and that was 
Just getting rich. Yeah. yeah. I mean, money and fame. What else? What else was there really? To I just and, kept and, thinking and the about fame is is almost like yeah secondary. It's like they're they're really they think they're after hunger. the money. They probably care less whether they were really famous at the end of the day, as long as they had the money. But yeah, I'm just like so. It was is that all it's about? Is just getting the, getting rich. The irony <laughs> of all of this is like what Jesus said: you will have your reward. Mm-hmm. You either get it now. Or, or you're gonna wait for it and God's gonna reward those that are faithful to him, right? Mm-hmm. And, and these people have their reward. I mean, they, I, could, I could just hear those words ringing like, you, you have the planes, you had the life, you mm-hmm. had the mansion. Look yeah. at all these people that were suffering and you did nothing to that's help what you them, want, you know? And that's what you gave credit to the universe yeah, for. You manifest this yeah. so you can reap the consequences of that. Then that's the person that's literally like, you know, and I don't think God's like against people being wealthy. I don't yeah. think that's that's yeah. what what it means everybody should be poor. It's yeah. just that what what is your motives behind what you're doing? And I think this is just Selfish, selfish me. Look at what I'm gonna do. Look at yeah, you're fame, buying money, gold fortune. chains and stuff. That's not doing anything yep. to help anyone. Do they ever address the reasonings or you know why it may not happen for certain people, or they just oh you just got, you did, you you got did, negative you things in your yeah. life. You, you gotta you gotta change enough. your house yeah. and feng shui. Well, and, yeah. I mean, it's not all that different than people who go to somebody to be healed mm-hmm. and they tell well you just didn't have enough faith. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we're about to look yeah. at right now. Think about all those things you just heard. Now, this is the church. We just watched worldly, new age, heathens don't pray in vain repetition like the heathens do. Now, this is the church. What am I talking about? Get in the Word, write it down, and on purpose make some stuff happen. Do you hear what I said? On purpose get a promotion. Instead of hoping and a prayer, make one. Remember what the Bible says? Make your way prosperous on purpose. On purpose. The doctor doesn't have the healing. He doesn't have the cure to your disease. Well, make a cure. You take the authority of God's Word, which is equipped with the anointing of God, and put it on your mouth. You are walking in the exact same power that God Almighty walked in when he said, let there be light. But here's one thing we got to get a hold of. Nothing just happens. If you sit there and keep your mouth closed and break what Psalms 119.72 calls the law of the mouth. The Bible says the law of the mouth is better than silver and gold. Why? Because that's how we make it. We've got to begin to understand that my, the way I make my living is, is with what comes out of my mouth. Every day of my life, I get up and I declare certain things because I've got to call those things that be not as though they were. If I'm not saying anything, I'm not creating anything. That's how God created the system. And he, when God said, and 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 then the angels looked around and said, what is man that thou art mindful of him, that thou made him a little lower than Elohim? the God and creator of all physical things. Now that's the characteristic that we take on as sons and daughters of God. That, and Creflo said, and Creflo said, and Creflo said, and Creflo said, and Creflo Creflo saw what he said. Now while people are picking at this, I'm saying and logging in confession time, and I'm reeling in things out of the realm of the spirit that will be evident in this physical realm. If it gets in your mind, it's gonna end up coming out of your mouth. And words have creative power. Do you understand that? God said, let there be light. And his words were so powerful because he's totally holy, totally pure. Do you know that the universe is still right now as we sit here expanding at the speed of light? Just because one time God said, let there be light. When we speak faith-filled words, It goes into the spiritual realm and begins to create and pull out of that realm that we don't see the things that we desire into this realm where we can see them. When you understand that your words activate and frame your life, just like your daddy's words frame this earth, then don't sit back when when you know you need to grab something and pull it in your life 
and act like you've just been sitting there puffing on a joint. You need to say that thing. Tonight, my brothers and my sisters, I decree a miracle. I declare a blessing. I speak it into existence without intimidation. Touch somebody and say manifest. You can think positive. You can believe for favor. That's good, but nothing happens till you speak. The miracle is in your mouth. I want to talk to you today about how your words become your reality. When you speak something out, you give life to what you're saying. If you continue to say it, eventually that can become a reality. Whether you realize it or not, you are prophesying your future. So you have the ability to manifest, speak things into existence, and make prophecy, your own prophecy, come true. What, what's interesting is that like, nowhere in that is somebody saying, Lord, is this, you know, your will? Exactly. And, like really going, God, is this something exactly. that you even want in my life? Mm -hmm. It's almost like bending, yes. bending God and the universe and whatever they're saying to whatever you want. And that's the point I wanted to get to just before all this is like, what, what is it that we are assuming that our desires are the right desires, that they're mm -hmm. pure desires, that they're the same desires as God. Like, shouldn't we be going to God and asking him to shape and mold our desires? And, and like you're saying, give that check and balance. Like, Lord, what do you want? Because the Bible also says, your will be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not my will be done, yeah. God's will be done. Right. So this is presumption. Well, no, uh, <laughs> this is, these are Christians, but it reminds me a lot of deism where they're saying God spoke and that things came into existence. He gave you the power, so now you go ahead and do whatever. Mm -hmm. Don't even involve the creator because he just set things in motion and we, we have to do whatever we need to do. There's no involvement. There's no, that's... Yeah, yeah God's not involved. You're essentially just cutting him out of the equation. Exactly. Uh, I just want people to realize that this is not one small little cult over here doing this. These are the mega churches. They're televised. They fill up stadiums. This is where everybody's at. And it's, it's so deceptive because it's so close to, you know, like, I do believe that faith, like you read earlier, as small as a mustard seed, right? God says you can move mountains, but whatever you ask in my name, right? Name is character in the Bible, right? So whatever you ask in the character of Christ, like what was the character of Christ like? What was he, what was he doing? Constantly will, thinking of other people, right? Yeah. And so, you know, Wait, this did Jesus sounds... Have a jet? And a Lamborghini and gold chains. You know, change his last name to money. <laughs> <laughs> Dollar. <laughs> Dollar? Like what in the world? And sometimes we, we see things and we want the positive out of it, but we have no idea what we're getting ourselves mm. into. Like I'm reminded of the story of the sons of Sceva mm. in Acts chapter 19. Mm -hmm. They're out there speaking things into existence, telling demons to get out of people mm. in the name of Jesus. But the demons didn't recognize that they were like They're laughing at him. Who are you? Much. Exactly. We know Paul, we don't know you. We're like <laughs> yeah. what? And then a terrible outcome. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna fascinating story you picked because, you know, the demons answer. It's like if you could just, you know, you're out there to prophesy whatever and it's gonna come true. It's like, no, you're you're seeing that there's spiritual forces at work and they're saying, you know, we don't even know you. What a Who bubble pop though. Right. Like, ah, uh, I don't mm. I didn't know it's a know me. <laughs> you made the point that, you know, it's so close, but is it really? Like if you're studying the Bible, if you know the stories, there's, that should just be so outright. There's the key. Yeah. There are so many times that if you don't know what the word of God says, this could sound. Yeah, I mean, you're hearing he, a preacher say you're stuff. You're hearing a preacher say, listen, like you should act on faith. Whatever you say with faith, it happens, right? Well, that sounds excellent, mm -hmm. right? I, I know, I mean. Throw a few scriptures in there and then God said and it happened, you know? Yeah, you know, like, like I love it. We've had Eric Wilson on this show for, for a few times and he's always telling me, when you pray, why don't you pray and thank God for the thing that you just asked him? Mm -hmm. Thank him for doing that. And I always thought, thought that was kind of interesting, like, because it's like literally by faith, Lord, I know you're going to take care of it, but if you don't, you know, that's fine. Yeah. And, and I think that, uh, you know, looking at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they get thrown in the fiery furnace, right? And they're just like, hey, look, dude, my God can deliver us out of this. We don't need to even sit and think about it, Nebuchadnezzar. Like, but if he doesn't, 
we're cool. They weren't saying, it. I will not be burned, I will not be burned, I will not be yeah. burned. Yeah. Like, That's <laughs> serious <laughs> faith right there. And putting that trust and saying, listen, God's able to, but if he doesn't, then he's got a better reason for it. And I think that same kind of thing can, should be applied here. Yeah. You know, hey, look, I would love the healing, but for some reason, if God, you don't heal me or somebody else, then you have a good reason for God it. God is at yeah. the center, There's not a, us. Interesting line between faith and presumption. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question. Why do you wash your hands? Keep them clean. clean. Okay. Why do you need to keep them clean? Keep my body healthy. Okay. So there's a correlation that if your hands aren't clean, you could get sick. Get sick. Well, why don't you just, you know, claim in faith that just God's going to keep you well? What, what do you need to wash your hands for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no sort of. There's no sort of barometer there of like, okay, morality plays into this as well. Does, it's just like, whatever, I'm believing this with faith. Doesn't so. God want you to be well? Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. He does want you to be well. Yeah. yeah. But hand washing is also yeah. something that we've learned as part of the Bible being like, yeah, that's a good thing to do for, for personal hygiene. So, yeah. So there may be things going around. And it's like, you don't want to catch them, you know, cold, flu, whatever. And uh, you still wash your hands. You know, you might believe that God's going to keep you well, but you still wash your hands. Mm -hmm. So it's a fine yeah. line between faith yeah. and presumption. There, there are plenty of Christians that smoke, right? Yeah. And I think that if you were just applying this to your Christianity of faith, I'm going to smoke, but I, I'm not going to get cancer. Come you know, bless this cigarette. Take <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's like you know, sometimes God allows those consequences of our actions, yeah. and, and I don't I don't think that's mean of God. No. I think it's like you know, in in a world of free will, you have the free will, but to try and just say right, now I'm going to will this into existence is is yeah. So we see that the world is chanting these vain repetitions for the abundance of money. What is the church actually trying to manifest? We saw them saying, just say it in existence, you know, all this stuff. But what are they, the majority of the time, what are they actually trying to manifest? Money! Somebody said, oh, I didn't come here because I want to hear about money. I came here because I need some peace. Well, honey, you need some money or you ain't going to never know no peace. Because I've heard people say, it's not about money. It's about peace and it's about joy and it's about love. It's about money. He got rubies and diamonds, silver and gold. Trump is a fool. He got riches on told. And you know who I am? I'm a child of the king. Because why would the scripture say, let the poor say, I am rich, if it wasn't the will of God to break the power of poverty over people's lives? I found me a picture. This is my first billion. And I speak to it. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I declare, I decree, this is it. Money. Anointing. You put something up here. Woo! Put this anointing on it. I'll put this anointing on it. I'll tell you what, you put something up here. I'm putting put this anointing on this money, man. Woo! 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 Get some anointing. You put something up here. Woo! Oh my goodness. I mean, it's just I'm amazing. Shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked. Really? This the is the, the majority of churches, man. I'm telling you, like, this is where most people are at. And what you said about how many people are in that crowd that are living like that pastor, hardly any, none, it, most it, of them. I, I'm sitting there and, then, and my mind is automatically taken to the time where Jesus is in the temple. Mm. And what is going on? 
it's this is before he, just before he dies, you know, and there's money changers mm-hmm. and there's all this commerce going on. And what does Jesus say? You know, he takes out the the whip or whatever you want to call it. And he throws the tables over and he runs off the money changers. You know, he says, my house should be called a house of prayer. Mm. You know, because what were they doing? They were robbing the people. Yeah. They were robbing them. They were selling them something, walking out the back door, sending it back out the front, selling it to him again. And it was mm. just this like cheating. And that, and do you know that they had manipulated, manipulated the exchange rate of the currency mm. Mm. to um. devalue the people's money and increase the value of their currency, the temple currency. And so they were making a lot of money off of the people because you come all this distance, right? And uh, it's kind of a pain to bring your lamb or your doves or whatever from a long distance. So you just buy it when you're there. Mm. But if all of a sudden everything is inflation, you're robbing the people. We pick and choose what what we get, um, that we get on hard about. like. this guy, money mm. to me. Now, like, they're not calling each other out on plagiarism. We showed many different preachers yeah. doing this. But think about it in, like, a different context. When there's um, a, uh, a trial going on or people are coming in to be questioned and each person is saying the same exact thing, what is assumed? That that's they must be talking to whatever. each other. Exactly. <laughs> so you have all these different people saying the same thing. Is there some organization involved? What is their end goal? Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, like... Like it's there at the top of the multi-level marketing, basically. Mm. Uh, the people that say, no, I went to that church five years, it didn't work, leave, well, somebody else is coming right back in and the guy at the top stays at the top. And not to get into like conspiracy or anything, but there must be an agenda. If they're all on the same page. Mm. What's crazy is like this guy dancing around on the money. It's like he's sitting there going, you're gonna get the money, but yet people are going up there and giving their money to well, this guy. you have guy. to give to receive, you know? I mean, what about them? What a scheme. I think wow. I think they know each other. Um, well, we saw Griffin and Dollar hanging out with Kenneth Copeland and those yeah, gold Yeah, I think drums. they know each other. And so, and and if you're all kind of reading the same material, mm. and you know each other, and you hang out together, and you talk, then you could see how it would even the same mannerisms, mantras, movements, mm-hmm. all I mean, of that but, is the same. But look at these law of attraction people, yeah. mm. and they're unrelated YouTubers. And what are they doing? They're basically saying the same thing. It's the same buzzwords, the same phrases, the same mm. kind of thing, same ideas. So to do it in the same manner, I mean, yeah, it, it does seem kind of odd, but you know, if you hang out, you rub off on each other. I, I, I think. Have you ever seen the videos of like Kenneth Copeland's, like you know, the reporter goes up to him and oh, asks him like, yeah, "What? Really? How did come you have so many jets?" I mean, it's just amazing. He's like, I'm not going to answer you. I'm not going to talk to you. And like, I mean, the dude's just ridiculously wealthy. Even what's his name in Texas? Yeah, Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. I mean, his place is multi-million dollar. I wonder what these guys' net worth are. I'm going to (laughs) look. So I want to read this verse in Matthew 4, 8, and 9 because we're looking at what are they manifesting? Money. Mm. They're not manifesting like a house for my member, you know, or something, you know. Feed these people... It's all money. And it says that the devil takes him, Jesus, up to an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and all the glory of them and says unto him, all these things will I give to you if you bow down, if you fall down and worship me. It's Satan who wants to give you all the kingdoms of the world, all the gold and the riches. I never heard Jesus say that. Mm -mm. If you follow me, you'll be rich. No, he said, if you follow me, you'll be hated, persecuted. I don't have a place to rest my head. Are you sure you want to follow me? And did I understand what one of the preachers were saying? He said, uh, people are looking for happiness, but you need money for happiness. Well, if you can manifest anything that you want, why go with the tool? Why not get what you want? Just ask for happiness. Why that was pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. He said peace. Yeah. <laughs> but in order to have peace, you need money. Yeah. You ever heard of the, the phrase that says, more money, more problems? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's I true. mean, that's true yeah. in life, I think. No, it is like anytime I get like, a, I don't know, a, a bonus check or something, flat tire. You know, it's <laughs> right? like, and, yes. and so I had to change my way of thinking. I'm like, well, God, you provided for that flat tire. Because you saw it coming. Yeah. At the right time. Yeah. And what a contrast to how Jesus was when he, mm. the, the rich young ruler came to him and was like, you know, what do I need to do to, to have 
eternal life. And Jesus answers him and then shows him that the things that he covets the most, he says like, you know, go and sell your things and, and give to the poor and then come and follow me. What, I mean, like if you had the opportunity to walk around with Jesus and become one of his disciples, to me, that would be like the crowning thing you could do on this planet. And yet the man went away and was saddened yeah. by that because he had great possessions. And that's a good point. Jesus is not in the business of just throwing money at you just for the sake of it, right. but he does provide you with money. Think yeah. of the disciples when they needed to pay their yeah. taxes. He yeah. provided just enough for yeah. that need. Don't Reaching take, don't take extra. Yeah. yeah. Don't take extra because what will you need, you'll be provided by. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I've heard testimony after testimony of people that say that I needed something. I needed something the last minute, got the check in the mail. It was just the right amount or barely over, you know, it wasn't like I got a million dollars. What's the name of the guy that had the orphanages? George Mueller. George Mueller. Have you guys ever heard of that story? I've heard of him. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. This guy would like, he had orphanages, and he was kind of like a thief early on in his life, wasn't he? And, and then he all of a sudden, he like got his heart raptured by God and was literally like sold out to him. And he started these orphanages, and he would set the kids out with no food. And he'd be like, let's pray. God's going to provide. Yep. Has no idea how he's going to feed these kids. And all of a sudden, a bread truck would show up and be like, hey, we made all these extra breads and we don't know what to do with them. Can you guys use them? <laughs> like crazy stuff like that. I think that's, that's when God shows up in a mighty way. And I think this is Satan just twisting what God is, is, is able to do. And he's just putting it in your mouth and saying, now you, you make this happen. Yeah, we're not talking about the other parts of the Bible. I mean, it, Jesus is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So now you're inviting all that level of difficulty for all That's these people. Point. It's like, That's a good point. wait a minute, like, let's, let's talk about the whole picture, not just one side of the picture. Mm -hmm. And, and I love the point you made about, you know, it's like, what do you need the money for if you have God that can provide you the peace, the love, the joy, Exactly. you know? It's, There's no instruction. They're just like, ask for money, and that's it. Like, yeah, believe yeah. them hanging. <laughs> so, Keith, you mentioned, you know, is this my will or is it God's will? You know, mm -hmm. so back to this uh, Law of Attraction website, it says manifesting with the Law of Attraction. When you use it correctly, the power manifests in your life things that you want. It's the law of power that brings into your life people that can help you with your plans. It's, it is the power that can create a situ the situation and circumstances you want. It is also the power that draws into your life things that you want wow. and help you achieve your dreams. It is the means to create the life you desire. Can you take advantage of this law? Yes, you can. I mercy, have one mercy, phrase, mercy. Die, old man. Yeah. Like, you know, like we're, we're not supposed to be feeding that self. You know, that self is always going to get in there somehow. And so, you know, whenever, whenever you hear that, you, me, I, myself, this, well, it's just a bad. Satan wants some company. What's that verse in Isaiah? Like, uh, Isaiah 14. 14. Um, I will be like the most yeah, high. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. I will set my throne against the stars of the north. That's exactly what mm -hmm. I was hearing the whole time he was yep. reading that. That's right. So like, here's some scriptures that talk about whose plans. <clears throat> uh, Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in the mind of man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand, or the plans of the Lord that will stand. So it's his plans that are ultimately going to happen. No matter how many plans you got, it's his plans that are going to continue. Isaiah 14, 24 says, The Lord of hosts has sworn, As I have planned, so shall it be. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Mm -hmm. uh, Ephesians, 19, or Ephesians 1, 9 through 10 says, Making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he has set in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, his plan, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. And then Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans mm -hmm. for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. He's got mm -hmm. plans for us of hope yeah. and peace and prosperity, but not <laughs> the way they're looking at it. I, I can just hear somebody, though, like, but on one translation, Mikey, it says prosper, plans to prosper you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> plans to make you filthy rich. Mm -hmm. So if it's your plans, your words that manifest things into existence, who are you claiming to be? Mm. What are you claiming? If it's, if it's you that does it, you're speaking things into existence, you're manifesting, who are you really claiming to be? Let's hear it from 
the Christians' mouths themselves. All these clips are from TBN, you know, big mega churches that are on TV. This is not some secret thing. This is like, this is what's out there. Go ahead. You tap into who you really are. You know what the Bible calls you? It says you are a little Elohim. You are a little God. When I read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. That we're gods. I am a little God. Yes. Yes. I have his name. I'm one with him. I'm in covenant relation. Yeah. I am a little God. Critics, you are be gone. anything that he is. Yes. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now that's interesting because if everything produces after its own kind, we now see God producing man. And if God now produces man, and everything produces after its own kind, if horses get together, they produce what? And if dogs get together, they produce what? If cats get together, they produce what? But if the Godhead gets together and say, let us make man, then what are they producing? They're producing gods. Now, I got to hit this thing real hard in the very beginning because I ain't got time to go through all this. But I'm going to say to you right now, you are gods, little g. You are gods because you came from God and you are gods. You're not just human. The only human part about you is this physical body that you live in. How many of your children are God? Oh, see, no, listen, listen. Nobody has problems saying, I'm a child of God. Everybody has problems saying, I'm a little G. Oh, everybody has problems saying, listen, let, let, let's get down to it. Everybody got problems saying, I'm a God. Yeah. See, look at you just had a problem. <gasps> But I didn't say it. He said Jesus said, go in my name, go in my stead. Don't say I have, say I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. Say after me, within me is a God man. Say it again. Within me is a God man. Now let's say it even better than that. Let's say I am a God man. You know who you are? Turn to Psalm 82. This is going to blow your mind real good. Psalm 82, 1. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. That's you. He judgeth among the what? Now would you please listen to me? This is talking about you. He's telling the gods. Who are the gods? You are. See, I never heard that. Let me ask you this. Hello, you. Are you God's offspring? Then you're not human. You know, why do people have such a fit about God calling his creation, his creation, his man, not his whole creation, but his man, little gods. If he's God, what's he going to call them but the God kind? I mean, if you as a human being have a baby, you call it a human kind. If, if cattle has another cattle, they call it cattle kind. So, I mean, what's God supposed to call us? Doesn't the Bible say we're created in his image? You heard what I said? Yes, sir. You can be God talking to your money. When you say it's God, you become God talking to your money. What? Death and life is in the power. Of whose tongue? Yours. You ready for this? You want something that'll knock your lights off? You choose when you live. You choose when you die. Death and life's in the power of your tongue. Not God's. Ooh, man. Uh, I, if I was on the front row there, I'd be like, I'm going to back up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, I just think it's interesting that it's the church who's saying, you're gods. You can speak and manifest things in your life. You have the power to speak just like God spoke things into existence. You are little gods. The world isn't even saying that. I mean, um, you got a couple of them probably that think that way, but they're not the ones openly saying it. 
on national television to congregations like this. So I'm assuming all these people are fine with wearing and buying knockoffs, not the genuine thing. Because, <laughs> I mean, it was made in its likeness, right? It should be all right. Right. <laughs> Who cares about the genuine stuff? Oh, yeah. I thought it was Good pretty point. interesting, that pr preacher that was like, you know, hey, what does two horses get together? What do they make? They make a horse. What do two dogs get together? They make what? And then he's like applying that same sort of thing Logic, that God yeah. made us. But didn't God make the horse? Yeah. Didn't God make the other stuff? So God made all this other stuff. So what is it? Everything is just like a God horse and a God dog. Yeah, the Israelites yeah. could have said, well, yeah. God made the calf, so let's worship the calf because it's part of God, right? Yeah. Psalm 8, verse... Psalm 8, verse 5 tells us exactly where we are on the hierarchy, on the chain. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. One of them actually said uh, a little lower than Elohim. And I was like, wait, it says angels. I looked it mm. up, it really is Elohim, but it still says lower than. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and yeah, so these people kept saying, God spoke and it happened, right? Yeah, he's God. <laughs> uh, just, or, Kenneth Copeland in Believer's Voice of Victory magazine, February 1987 on page nine said, he had an encounter with Jesus. He said, Jesus spoke to me verbally. A lot of these people say that. Jesse Duplantis says he went to heaven and all that kind of, but they'll say, God was telling me this. And you know, I'm not against that. I'm not saying that we don't hear from God. Mm -hmm. I, in my testimony, I say, God said, this is your moment. And I, you know, things like that. But they're having this dialogue with, with Jesus about things. I don't believe this was Jesus because it says, Jesus is saying to Kenneth Copeland, don't be disturbed when people accuse you of thinking you are God. They crucified me for claiming I was God. I didn't claim that I was God. I just claimed that I walked with him and that he was in me. Hallelujah. Wow. That's what you're doing. Wow. 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 Yeah. You know, I think that if you think about, okay, what transpired back at the Garden of Eden then? If the snake was literally telling Eve, like, you can be as gods, Good right? Point. That's where we're going. You know? Because the law of attraction.com says, what is the law of attraction? Open your eyes. I think interesting use of words. Open your eyes to a world of endless possibilities. Does that sound like anything? Open your eyes. Mm. Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Jesse the planet said, You say when you live, you say when you die, right? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. This is exactly what we keep seeing. You can be like God. You are God. Your eyes are open. You know, you're woke. You can tap into the power of God, mm -hmm. and you can do things that you're not really asking God for his permission. I mean, can you imagine if everybody just had their own free will to create and do whatever they wanted to do? This place would be chaos. Well, you have mm -hmm. Tower of Babel right there. Yeah. But it kind of caught me off guard that the woman said, we are little Elohims, oh, yeah. we are little gods. And I was wondering if that was biblical. Like, what, is she taking something out of context? So I did a quick search and yeah, um, Psalm chapter 82, verse six. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. So can we, uh, have you guys heard this before? I have heard that. Mormons use it. Okay. I, can we I wondered flesh if that it's out like, it? um, I don't know if this is true or not, but I, I wondered if it's just talking about possessive, and there's not, there's no punctuation in the original Hebrew and Greek. So if it says, you are gods, and you are the children of, are my children, he, isn't he just saying, you're mine, you're gods? Your mind, oh, like, gotcha. That's gotcha. interesting, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard that verse talked about, you know. Yeah, I, I think when the Bible describes us as being made in the image of God, that it's like in the very likeness of Him, not necessarily like in just form and everything. It's like we, we have the same moral create or like same moral character as, yeah. as God, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. And I think that sometimes gets lost in translation, and I wonder if that's that's happening here as well. <laughs> Which is funny because we read things like that and just want to take it as it is, but there are other clear passages that we won't take as it is. Right. We like right. explain right. it away. Yeah, let's <laughs> hold on to this one. Yeah. Don't eat swine. <laughs> what? Oh, that's <laughs> metaphoric. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just want to test the spirits of these churches because we're told to test the spirits. You know, if this is a 
a church, you know, we're going we're gonna to be looking at the same churches. The same churches that are saying you can manifest whatever you say, you can speak it into existence. What other things are going on in that church? And let's compare what's going on in those churches to the other spirits of the world, because we've already tested this with the law of attraction, and it's identical. If anything, it's worse, because these people are saying they are God. Mm -hmm. But here's a, a comparison of Kundalini Yoga versus churches that say they're filled with the Holy Spirit and, and what goes on in those churches. And grace is what Katagama is about. God's amazing grace. Tito Dosado, Dude, these people are crawling around like animals, screaming. What is one of the fruits of the spirit? Self control. Right? Self control. Yeah. Self control. Peace, peace. Love. Gentleness. Meekness. Yeah. You know, like which was what Jesus was in all situations, all context. If you look at that out of context, you would never think that that's a church service. No. And when Jesus actually like cast out demons out of people, right? Mm. They were calm. They that's were right. never like running around like, wow, well, I'm filled the with the Holy Spirit. The demoniac says. When they found him, he was sitting in his right mind. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this looks like insanity, right? And I've I have shown this to other people, and they're like, "Well, yeah, Satan has a counterfeit for everything." So this on the left is Satan's counterfeit of the oh, thing wow. on the right. Yeah, Satan does have a counterfeit for everything, um, but it's also there's some differences there. There's some contrast there that the the very spirit of God is very you know gentle and, and sweet and meek and mild and not just sober like, mind, yeah, right? Not just over running around like hurting yourself. I mean, some of these people, I can't imagine like, this is like worse than crowd surfing. I mean, yeah. how do you not get hurt? Yeah, I mean, when it says be sober minded, yet these people say I'm being drunk in the spirit. Mm. I'm being slain in the spirit. And, and the only context I've ever heard of somebody falling out, you know, because it was because they were in the presence of an angel, like right there in front of them. It wasn't just a bunch of people falling back and stuff. And they, yeah, they, they weren't out of around. control. They usually like ask the question or something yeah. like that. Yeah. They were or you would, mind. I mean, what would you do if an angel showed up right in your midst and, you know, it's bright and everything like this? You would just be like, mm -hmm. you know, like, I shouldn't be looking at this. Mm -hmm. Like, it just humility, I think, is what the natural reaction to that was. Oh, Not good. just like, yeah. bah, woo, <laughs> run around in circles around him. Mm -hmm. The angel would be like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it depends on the context, usually. Um, so like when the angel comes down at Jesus' resurrection, they fall as dead, dead men, men. Yeah. right? When the angel comes to the various prophets, you know, they wind up trying to worship and then the angel has to correct them. Mm -hmm. no, 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 don't do that. I'm not. And which one, not which one fell flat on his face and like couldn't get up? Was that Isaiah? And he picked him up, put the thing in his mouth. Oh, the Was hot it? coal on his lips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that Isaiah? He fell as a dead man as well. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what, yeah. they, what they use to justify being slain in the spirit or whatever. 
I want to look at a yoga journal on what the Kundalini is. And right there, I mean, right when the very top of the page says, is a Kundalini awakening safe? They know <laughs> that if you're practicing this, it's going to bring fear upon you. You could hurt yourself. And they're even warning you that this might not be safe. It says, mm -hmm. are you ready to discover your life's purpose and activate your fullest potential? Kundalini yoga. So remember, this is yoga, mm -hmm. something the Christians do. Yoking the spirit. Yeah. Is an ancient practice that helps you channel powerful energy and transform your life. In Sanskrit, kundalini means coiled snake or the serpent. And it is believed that divine energy was created as at the base of your spine. It's the energy we are born with. And Kundalini works to uncoil the snake and connect us to our divine essence. So again, we are gods. We have a coiled snake inside of us that we need to awaken, open your eyes, be woke. You know, all this is servant language. And yet yoga is in the church. We have a video on that, holy yoga. Look at that. Uh, it goes on to say, according to Tantra, kundalini energy rests like a coiled serpent at the base of the spine. When this dormant energy flows freely upward toward the seven chakras, energy centers, and leads to an expanded state of consciousness, it's known as the kundalini awakening. The kundalini awakening is a remarkably powerful spiritual experience, one that yogis and practitioners spend years preparing for. The experience can happen intentionally through Practices like meditation, pranayama, yoga, and prayer, or it can happen without warning. <laughs> this type of awakening is considered to be fairly common in the spiritual world, but in our Western societies, kundalini awakenings are considered rare. So it can even happen unintentionally. So if people are like, well, you know, this can't be happening to me because I'm in church, you know, I think there's a huge deception with all that. These are three books about the Kundalini, and I just want to show the visual of this serpent. I mean, mm. it's, it's all about the serpent going to your brain, the serpent power, the Kundalini guide. But that's what people say. But the feeling I get feels good. It's not scary or evil. These people are saying Jesus is the way to salvation. So the, the false sense of security people have is if I'm in a church and they're saying things about Jesus, uh, it feels good, then it must be okay, right? It's not, it's not scary because these are the images that we get, right? Satan looks like this with uh, goat horns and big wings and goat legs. And, and a possession is like when your head spins around and you're vomiting green goo everywhere. That is a false idea to make us think, well, if that's not happening to me, it's okay. If I didn't see the, the goat head guy, if I didn't you know, contort and all this, then it must be okay. That's a false sense of security. These are some examples of where something looked good, but it wasn't. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15 says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Mm. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. Wow. If Satan can transform himself as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You, know, you make a good point um, about things not necessarily being what we expect. Because mm -hmm. the Bible is clear that Saul, towards the end of his reign, King Saul, was possessed. Well, mm -hmm. How was that manifested? He was depressed. And I'm not right. saying everyone who's depressed is possessed, but I'm just right. saying that um, it, can, it takes so many different forms. It's not always green exactly. and velvet, you know? Yeah. In John 6, 70, Jesus said to them, he, he answered them, have not I chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? Wow. They didn't even mm. know who among them every day they were hanging out with Jesus in the presence of Jesus mm. and one of them was a devil and they couldn't even tell who it was. Wow, mm -hmm. yeah. Talk about deception. Matthew 16, 23, but he turned and said, Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Peter. Wow. Jesus, one of his disciples. And, and all Peter wants to do is say, you, I don't want you to die. You know? mm -hmm. But Jesus knew that this was Satan speaking through Peter. You're an offense to me. 
And then in Acts 16, 16 through 18, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. That's, She's saying truth. Crazy, yeah. She's saying these are the disciples that are leading you to salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said, to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out in the same hour. Wow. These wow. are people who are proclaiming truth, proclaiming uh, they're, a, they're a disciple amongst Jesus. They're saying these men have the truth. Listen to them, you know? That, I mean, there's the other demoniac as well that, um, you know, when, when he was in front of Jesus and he said, what have you to do with us, uh -huh. you know, a son, a son of the most high God? Yeah. And, you know, are you ready to cast us out into the abyss? And it's like they're, they're, they're telling the people around them that this is the God's son God. and, yeah, yeah. and everything. And Jesus is like, no, be quiet. Yeah. Like, stop talking. Here's another one about something that's good. Genesis 3, 6, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, right? It looked good and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree was desired to make one wise. She wanted this fruit because it looked good. It was something about it was good, desirable, that she wanted to be wise. Yeah, and why shouldn't she have her desire? I mean, that's yeah. what all those people were talking about early here, right? Yeah, manifest it, you know? So I, I just bring that up because so many people think, well, if it feels good, it feels loving, it can't be a Satan because he's the opposite of love. Dude, people take drugs and, and trip out and say that it was the most loving thing they ever felt in their life. People in the New Age movement, it's all about love, right? Do you honestly believe that people in the New Age are are getting something from Jesus Christ, peace and love? No, it's a satanic deception. So here's the last point about speaking in tongues and what is the truth of that when we compare it to scripture and compare it to what's going on in the church. So there is something in the New Age. The New Age does have a counterfeit of this as well. Um, it's called light language. And so we're gonna compare what the new age is doing and what's happening in the church and see, is there anything different about it? Can we even tell a difference between these two things? And I was guided to come in this place to do this transmission. This is Lemuria, light language and sound activation. And you will know if this is the message for you. Many of us had lifetimes together as a soul group, as a soul family, on Lemuria. Ah, keruku sashi ya na haili huk takayara si. Onaka mahila ko sakayena koraki troki sku hayara. Oh, for the time has come to ha se ku and ha se bo and amu shikila basitu. And ali mureke ando tula majite kruti izino lo murevi shikili apose. What I've seen with my clients in the past is that some people actually do give their consent in the dream time. Uh, you know, they're traveling, astral traveling, and um, may encounter beings that appear to be something else than what they really are. And so you might think you are communicating with some angelic being or whatever, and actually it's something else. Angelic forces, angelic reinforcement, angelic reinforcement, angelic reinforcement. Vika hata anda ata ora bata rata anda eke eke manda Wow. What exactly is this for? Like, what, what are they saying is the purpose? Well, because they themselves can't interpret what they're saying. It's a spiritual <laughs> gift, and it's like a way of praying when you don't have the words, but in your spirit you know what you want, and it just comes out. And, and that's the thing. They'll tell you, hey, I, I was just preaching one day and it, and it just comes out. Like they don't, sometimes they'll say, I'm going to speak in tongues now and do it, but other times it just flows out. Mm. And so when you're reading stuff about the Kundalini, how it comes out 
without you wanting it or desiring mm. it. It just flows out. Wow. And so in the new age, they're saying that we are channeling beings, sometimes as aliens or whatever, and they're, they're feeling love. I, I want to look at some. These are comments on, on the woman that we just saw who's doing the praying hands, who's saying the, the, the gibberish. angel words. Yeah. That woman. Well, the, the new yeah, age yeah, yeah. person. Yeah, the new age person. These are the type of comments you see. I'm not sure how I found this, but my chest felt super heavy most of this around 14 minutes in. Tears. Wow, powerful. Thank you. Yeah. Four minutes in. Why do I feel like I was a mermaid and this is how I spoke to people I cared about? Um, another one. This is the first time I've seen one of your videos and I just subscribed to your channel. It was a really emotional experience for me. Thank you so much for your beautiful work. Lots of blessings to you. Everything I was doing, you would say right after. You said it's okay to cry and the waterworks really began. Mm. I began to move my hands, allowing them to flow freely, moving my energy. Then you began to, then you begin to touch energy manipulation. Thank you. When you start channeling the guardians, I just burst into tears, much love. This is what's happening in church. People are saying, this has to be of God because I feel emotional, I'm crying, I feel love. This is all the same stuff. These people are, are watching a new age person on a channel speak gibberish and they're saying that they're feeling, that they're crying and feeling feelings of emotion. We cannot judge miracles and signs by our emotions, man. That's yeah. like where this is all deceptive, you know? Yeah. Where do you think that came from? Since when is an experience with God heavily emotional? Yeah. At the end of every encounter, Jesus asks them to make a decision, you know, choose life, choose death, sin no more. If you sin, worse will come upon you. Like, oh. well, that's what you're so, answer. <clears throat> to answer your question, like, you know, what is, this is the way I've always understood why people do this experientially talking to other people. And this is from a, a website that basically puts this into words. Um, it says, this is like reason number one, the word of God teaches that when we are filled with the Holy Ghost, we speak with other tongues as the spirit of God gives utterance. Speaking in tongues is an initial evidence sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So there are churches that believe if you don't have this gift of speaking in tongues, then you, you don't have the Holy Spirit, spirit and you got to keep trying and trying. And it's only one of the gifts for one. Exactly. <laughs> the, when you read about the gifts, it's saying some have prophecy, some have mm -hmm. tongues, some have this and that. And we're going to go into what the Bible actually says tongues are because there's so many twistings of the thing. Do we see accounts of that after John the Baptist baptized or after the apostles baptized that people break out into no, speaking so tongues? No, what we're talking about is Acts chapter 2. Yeah, the only time this is the time that it happened. But people understood what they were saying. Exactly. Exactly. It was like you don't yeah, speak Spanish but, and you walk into a, a Spanish church and, and you start preaching and everybody's like, what? She knows Spanish? And right. it does say, like, it's not some dead gift. It does say in the last days, you know, pour out a spirit and... You'll be prophesying, speaking in tongues, and all that things, but it's not gibberish. Yeah. I mean, we're going to read straight from the scriptures that that's not even edifying. Yeah. You know? Because it says in Acts that every man heard them in their own tongue and understood. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm, true, I it was an angel language. If mm -hmm. people say that, they're twisting because in Joel and in Acts it says, Your sons and daughters will try prophesy, your old men will dream dreams. I don't mm -hmm. think that it says, I'm not aware that it says anywhere that. You know, you'll be speaking in tongues as a, like an end time yeah. event. Now, yeah, let's talk about every nation, every tongue, every tribe and stuff. To the point you were making, uh, that comes from 1 Corinthians 12. This is Paul, and he asked the question, because he's talking about the different gifts, and God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers. After that, miracles and gifts of healings, helps, administration, varieties of tongues. Mm -hmm. And then he asks, are all apostles? Are all mm. prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Mm. Do all interpret? No. But earnestly desire the best gifts, and I show you a more excellent way. So he's, he's essentially saying, not everybody does that. Yeah. He's saying, does the ear see? Does the eye hear? You know, we're all different parts of, the, of Christ, parts of the body of Christ. 
And then in 1 Corinthians 14, he says, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, mm -hmm. unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. edification. And that's a huge point in all of this. What my pers from what I can see, when people that are receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, and this is, this is their evidence, well, I, I speak in tongues, mm -hmm. that's not benefiting anybody but yourself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The reason the gift was given at Pentecost was to benefit other people. It was to spread, spread the gospel. gospel yeah. It's not ever for yourself. Yeah. If it's just for yourself, we're missing the whole point of any of the spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Good point. All the spiritual gifts are designed to bless other Others. people wow, yeah, good every point. time. I thought it was interesting when I was looking this up that it's not only called light language, what is it also called? star language and we know that angels are a star right mm -hmm. light language he can transform himself as an angel of light and dragon language wow i mean these people are not shy to say stuff about the serpent and the dragon and all this and um so i wanted to read in genesis 10 5 it says by these were the isles of the gentiles divided in their lands every one after his tongue, after their families and their nations. What is tongues here? It's languages, right? It's talking mm -hmm. about different languages, different nations have different tongues. So in the Bible, when you see this word tongues, you know, a lot of times people just say, oh, I've spoken the tongues of angels or whatever. And, and they just, they're throwing that word out their tongues like it is something different. I mean, if you could literally just say language, I mean, it's, different different translations they're just english translations of greek and hebrew so it just depends on who the person said it and it was written a long time ago people used words like that back you know in king's language they were saying oh I, what tongue do you speak or whatever you know <laughs> so from genesis to revelation we see it's it's consistent because even in revelation 14 6 it says to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people so from Genesis to Revelation, we see that tongue simply means language, mm -hmm. a, a spoken language that is a known language. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, For he that speaketh an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Now, this is where people say, no, it's not a known language. For one, unknown is italicized. That was thrown in there by the, by the translators. But either way, if I'm sitting here with you guys and I start speaking Chinese, that's an un unknown tongue. Mm. <laughs> you guys don't know Chinese. So it doesn't edify anybody is the whole point. First Corinthians 14, four and five says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, because it's not gonna edify you guys. Mm -hmm. But he that pros prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. So if we go on a mission trip to Mexico, my, my tongue will be unknown to the audience. And if I'm saying, you know, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, they're hearing gibberish. They don't know what I'm saying. But if there's an interpreter, he can tell them what I'm saying and it's edifying everybody. That's the, that's the point of tongues, the gift of it could be a supernatural gift where I get dropped off in an Amazonian jungle and somehow I'm speaking their language because that's what it was talking about. The Acts, uh, was it the, the tongues of fire? It said they all heard them in their own language. So 1 Corinthians 14 is where a lot of this is in there. Mm -hmm. And it says, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? That should be clear right there. <laughs> For ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto them that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian, a barbarian unto me. I mean, if you're, yeah. if you're speaking what good another is language, if you, yeah. What good is it if you don't understand each other? Mm. Exactly. It's, it's like the Tower of Babel, means. which made everybody just leave. Right. Um, it goes on, For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. So I may be giving thanks to God, but the other person's not hearing it. I mean, 
we go to a church sermon because that guy's up there preaching to everybody and feeding them the Word of God and everybody's being blessed. But if he's up there speaking another language, he's the only one being blessed. Mm -hmm. He's the only one receiving it. Um, it's not edifying others. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all, yet in the church I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might, be, I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, wow. and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him be silent in the mm. church Ooh. and let him speak to himself mm -hmm. and to God. Look, if I go to a church where there's a, a group of, you got Spanish over here and Chinese over here, and, and I'm speaking English, or maybe, yeah, I'm speaking English and you got the Spanish translator and the Chinese translator, that's going to be a long sermon. <laughs> He's saying, don't do it no more than three. I mean, don't try to have, all right, let's get, you know, <laughs> another race in here, another nationality in here, mm -hmm. because you just, I mean, people are going to get lost. That, that's pretty clear language. Let him keep silence in the church and let him speak it to himself and to God, right? Yeah. Like it's better for you to just, you should just communicate with God. You know, yeah. that will at least bless you. Exactly. If, other than these other people that are in here. If I'm, if I get dropped off in a church where nobody understands my language, there's no point in me even trying to, mm -hmm. I'm just going to, Lord, it's just me and you here. Mm -hmm. Nobody understands me, so I'm just going to talk to you. And pro tip for Bible study. I mean, we're looking at one doctrine, one practice of speaking in tongues, and they're drawing from the sole text of Acts chapter two. Yeah. You've read like 10 scriptures mm -hmm. that cancel that out. Mm -hmm. some, some of this is drawn from these as well it's confusing yeah because they'll pick up on bits and pieces for example in the first chap or in the first verse of first corinthians 13 paul says though i speak with the tongues of angels and of men mm -hmm. and have not love i have become you know a sounding a brass and a clanging symbol and he goes on to, to say some other things but they take that one part and say see paul spoke with the tongues of angels and of men mm -hmm. But if you go to 1 Corinthians, wow. line upon line, precept upon precept. Chapter 13, <laughs> and you were to go on, let me pull it up here real quick, not to derail on this, one. but he says, yeah, 13, he says, though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, what else does he say? He says, um, though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Well, here you have three things, speaking with the tongue of men and angels, he says, having the gift of prophecy and giving his body to be burned. Paul never gave his body to be burned. Mm -hmm. He's not giving this list as if it's totally experiential and everything happened to himself. He's saying, if this happens, or if this happens, or if this happens, and I don't have love. What does it mean? What's it good for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, to touch on that, because that, that one people really hold on to that one about the tongue of men and angels. I, I want to clarify that. 1 Corinthians 13, 1, it says, Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels. This word angels is the Greek G32, which just means messengers. Mm -hmm. That same word that gets translated in the English as angels can be used as a minister, preacher. Mm -hmm. Like that same word is used to describe a man, a preacher. So Paul's literally saying, you know, though I can speak with the tongue of men or maybe eloquent like an angel or a preacher, he's just saying some people have the gift of speaking really well. And he's saying, though I, you know, though I speak with the tongue of men, normal, or of a really eloquent speaker like a pastor or a minister or an angel even, because angels came and they spoke to men in their language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to say I'm speaking with the tongue of angels, well, let's look at every account where an angel spoke to a man. It wasn't gibberish. Right. They spoke to them in a language that they knew and understood. That's a good, good point. Good point, yeah. I mean, it really takes, um, you know, a, a, an understanding of the whole Bible as a context, you know, like, like really kind of saying, okay, well, let's, let's, like you just brought up, let's look at the examples of how this transpired, mm -hmm. rather than taking one verse and then building your theology around that one verse, yeah. you know, you've got to like, you've got to really just say, okay, well, then where, where's an example of somebody speaking in, in, in an angel or something, you yeah. know? Yeah, there's no communication without common understanding. Right. Yeah, literally every time you heard of somebody speaking in tongues, it was understood by somebody. Right. Um, I just wanted to bring up this, that the word Babel or Babel, you know, it was a, the Tower of Babel was built 
because it was about confusion. And God is not the author of confusion. And this word is the same word of like babbling. These people are, they're literally babbling. They're speaking gibberish. And this is confusion in the church. And I just think it's interesting that in Revelation 18, 3 and 4, it talks about, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. This fornication is spiritual. When God's people go astray from his teachings, his doctrine, he says that they, they're going a-whoring he's, because he's in a marriage relationship with us. And if you stray from him, then you're going a-whoring. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying that these... People are, these kings of the earth and all this are committing fornication with her and the merchants of the earth. <laughs> I'm thinking of a Creflo dollar, puts all this money, you know, the merchants and uh, uh, of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, mm -hmm. that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye are not received of her plagues. I mean, if we're looking at Babel, Babylon, false doctrines about rich, being rich and all the kings of the earth and stuff. This is what we're talking about. Because even like Kenneth Copeland, you know, he was a spiritual advisor for the president. You know, like these mega churches have tons of people there. And if the kings of the earth are going to be a part of any church, it's going to be that church, the one that promises pros prosperity and all that. So I just pray that this was edifying. This was not an attack on anybody because I'm, I'm sure there's people that watch our channel that are affiliated with this stuff. There's people in my family, my very close family that are into all this, that go to the churches where they promise prosperity, that speak in tongues. My family, I was in this, these types of churches, but as I began to study line upon line, you know, we, we say this over and over, you can't study the counterfeit and, and see that it's a counterfeit. You got to study the, the truth. And and those things looked convincing when I was in the church. Like Scotty said, you, you, you don't have a reference to what the preacher's saying. So when he says, you know, uh, let the rich, let the poor say I am rich, you say, hey, that sounds biblical. That's from the mm -hmm. Bible. So I'm poor, I'm gonna say I'm rich, you know. Um, I, this was all about trying to shine some light of truth to maybe make you question some things you didn't question before. And I, I pray that this is scriptural line upon line and uh if you know somebody that's involved in this and, and you want to share this with them I, I pray that you do and i pray that their heart will be ready to receive this because it, it could be controversial it could be uh hurtful but all we care about is, is showing the truth mm. that's what we should that's what we want to have here. i think you bring up a good point too um when you're ever confronted with something that's different than what you believe um, our natural knee-jerk reaction is just like to reject and like whatever you're attacking and stuff like this. But I think we need to come to God and say, is there truth here? Mm -hmm. If there is, show it to me, Lord, it, please, you know, um, show me show me where, this, where I err. And if you have that kind of um, um, experience, I think God will not ignore you. He will show you, he will, he will direct your paths. And so, um, you know, hopefully you'll prayerfully and humbly consider what's been said. I mean, this is some, some pretty interesting, uh, you know, solid information on, on where this is kind of coming from. And, and uh, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So we hope you guys are blessed. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and let us know what you think in the comments. We love hearing from you guys and interacting because we can only cover so much in an hour or a little over an hour, but we, we will get back to you. You know, we like talking back and forth and explaining ourselves more and sharing more scriptures with you. We love studying line upon line and iron sharpens iron, right? So come let us reason together. We love you. We'll see you guys next time on LED Live. I can't watch enough of this. The duelist who they say can speak with the spirits. The sins will destroy the commandments forever. A suspicious list of names prompts an investigation at a local school and concern from parents. The death note is derived from a Japanese animated show. The girl told authorities she got the idea from a Cartoon Network show. Mom, it's Mr. Satan. I recognize that voice anywhere.